Compass, the CBC News for Prince Edward Island with Roger Yunker and Sarah Fraser. In the news tonight, potato virus, a new threat confronts the island's all-important seed potato industry. And a shot at the title. PEI makes the playoff round at the Briar National Curling Championship. A new virus threat is confronting the PEI potato industry. It's not on the scale of the PBYN crisis, which cost farmers millions. And we have this for you coming up. Keep watching Compass. For the marquee segment, we'll be presenting a plethora of interesting stories, including a look at a new stage production of the movie Reservoir Dogs about a jewel heist gone horribly wrong. We'll also take a look at the new Michelle Pfeiffer movie Up Close and Poisonal. That's later in Compass. When you hold me. The insurance company of Prince Edward Island isn't really about insurance. It's about people. About people starting the only full-service general insurance company based in PEI. About island people working here, not someone else, somewhere else. About people's premiums being invested in PEI instead of out of province. It's about islanders helping islanders. So isn't it about time, time you considered the insurance company of Prince Edward Island? 250 and with that flurry activity like blustery conditions overnight tonight but sunshine tomorrow mixed in with flurries a cold windy weekend is in store so with that let's recap the island forecast for tonight, we are looking for periods of snow changing to flurries later this evening. A further 5 to 10 centimeters, a low, a cold minus 12. Winds northeast, they'll shift to the northwest at 40 kilometers per hour. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and cloud flurries and colder, a high of minus 6 degrees. Cold winds out of the west, 30 to 40 kilometers per hour. The long range outlook for Sunday, another cold day at minus 8. Monday, minus 3 with sunshine. Tuesday looks like a warming trend will begin. Sun and cloud on Tuesday at plus two degrees. So once the effects of this low pressure system move out, it looks like several days of nice weather. Once we start that warming trend late on Monday, and I'll be back in the studio at about five to seven to a recap a blustery night and the weekend forecast. Thanks a lot, Kevin, and still lots more to come. We have a really great marquee segment for you tonight. Now we've got a great sportscast. We're going to update the Briar from Kamloops. And Nancy joins us after this break. Yeah. The long-awaited widening of the Hillsboro Bridge is finally going ahead. Public Works Minister Keith Milliken announced in the legislature today that work will start this summer, and it's going to be done by straight crossing, the company building the fixed link. Here's John Jeffrey. When there's rush hour traffic, the two-lane Hillsboro Bridge becomes a bottleneck between Charlottetown and Stratford. It's been a problem for years. Over a year ago, the government began plans to widen the bridge into four lanes. Hillsborough Bridge is in the area of around $20 million. Public Works Minister Keith Milligan says the price tag has about doubled from the $9 or $10 million figure that was first mentioned last year. Uh, say the bridge is probably between $8 and $10 million, the bridge itself. But uh, fairly significant work is done on the streets. And so when you take the whole project together, I believe the number is between 18 and 20 million. These are concept drawings for the bridge and the approachways. The bridge builder, Straight Crossings Incorporated, will do the work. A single new lane will be built on both sides of the existing structure to create a four-lane bridge. We hope to be going this year. Does that mean you are? Or you yeah, we are. Yeah. If we're going to have a straight crossing, of course, uh, do it, then I mean they're going to have to get up and running because they're estimating they'll be through with the fixed link in a year's time. So if, if they're doing it, they've got to get going. 
Milligan says the widening of the Hillsborough Bridge should be completed by the summer of 1997. John Jeffrey, CBC News, Charlottetown. Well, the new bridge certainly looks nice, doesn't it? All happening at the same time, that fixed link in the Hillsborough Bridge. That's yeah. right. Happy International Women's right. Day to you mm -hmm. and to everyone out there. And we'll tell you about some of the celebrations and achievements in a moment. Speaking of celebrations, our live eye is showing us a couple as we look up uh, Queen Street in Charlottetown. It's still snowing in the capital city. Is right that something now. to celebrate? Yes, it is, especially if you're a skier. Kevin Gallant, what's in store this weekend? <laughs> Well, it looks like uh, we're making up for those good two months of winter, January and of February. We did receive upwards of 15 centimeters of snow and much of Prince Edward Island. Not a whole lot of good news in the forecast. Upwards of 10 centimeters of flurries overnight tonight. A windy, cold weekend, but there will be sunshine. I'll be back a little later in Compass to recap the weekend forecast. I'm Nancy Russell and coming up on Compass, the UPEI Panthers have the coach of the year and the most valuable player and now they'd like to add an AUAA championship to this year's list of honours. We'll have a preview of this weekend's basketball finals coming up later in sports. Grammy has an Alliance security system installed in her home for her protection. Quiet even fast. Grammy feels more comfortable knowing she's being looked after by a security system in case of a medical emergency or a fire. That makes me feel better too. Install a basic security system in your home for as little as $299 when you purchase a three-year monitoring plan from Alliance Security Systems, a division of Brumac Construction. Mom, can you get me one of those yellow stickers? They feel really comfortable. Well, they, you know, they really do know how to fit glasses and they know what looks best on you for the shape of your face, uh, for your lifestyle. We train our people to know all about shapes, colors, fashion, and it makes it easy. It was a very relaxing, reassuring experience, and I was apprehensive when I went in because I didn't know how I was going to find a pair of frames, but I liked. Yes. But it was just the easiest thing in the world. Monday on Island Morning, an update on the Hillsborough Bridge. Widening the bridge will be one of the biggest road projects ever undertaken in PEI. We'll get answers on everything from environmental to traffic concerns. And the Darnley Women's Institute says goodbye, but not before giving a very generous gift. All that and more on the Monday edition of Island Morning on CBC Radio FM 96. And Nancy Russell joins us now for sports. And Nancy, Peter McDonald has made curling history, hasn't he? That's right. The Summerside Skip has made the final four at the Briar. It's the best performance ever by an island rink. Other teams have made it to the tiebreakers, but nobody has won and made it to the quarterfinals. Until this morning, that is, when Peter McDonald defeated Newfoundland 10 to 6. And that put him into this afternoon's playoff against Don Westfall of Quebec. There was a big crowd at the Silver Fox Curling Club in Summerside this afternoon, and there was no doubt which team they were rooting for. But there were some worried looks by the third end. Quebec had scored two in the second to take a two to one lead. And in the third, Peter McDonald found himself looking at four Quebec rocks after this beautiful shot from Quebec skip Don Westfall. Peter McDonald's draw goes astray, and Quebec steals two to take a 4-1 lead. But the island fans in Kamloops weren't giving up yet. PEI comes back in the fifth. This time McDonald's draw is perfect, and Quebec's lead is cut to one. But Quebec scores two more in the sixth and takes a 6-3 lead. In the seventh, PEI has a chance for two but can't stick and Quebec is now up six to four. Now they blanked the eighth end, so the score remains six to four for Quebec, and we should have a final score for you before the end of Compass. Well, it has been seven years since UPEI won the AUAA Men's Basketball Championship. This season, they've defeated both of the top seeds in the Atlantic Conference. They won two awards earlier this week, and one of their key players is back in the lineup after an injury. So the Panthers are optimistic as they head into their first game of the championship tournament about half an hour from now against the St. Mary's Huskies. John, one 
worked out as usual this week at the field house, but there was one player who wasn't there. Point guard Jason McDonald broke his toe a week ago at practice. He didn't play the final two games of the regular season, and the Panthers missed him. Not only his play on the court, but his leadership too, off the court and in the dressing room and stuff, it was a big difference not having him there. And even if he could have went over and not played, I think it might have even made a difference. We're just, the second half of the season, our record has improved substantially since Jason's come back to the team in more ways than one. Since he joined the Panthers after Christmas, McDonald has been a pivotal part of the team, averaging almost nine points per game. After working so hard to get back in shape, after being away from basketball for a year and a half, McDonald couldn't believe his bad luck, breaking his toe just before the finals. It was disheartening at, at best, you know, uh, to work all this way to get this far and then to have uh, the mentality you probably won't be able to play or might not be able to play. It's uh, awful disappointing, but uh, I got some encouraging news today after seeing Dr. Barry Ling, and uh, he assured me that I'd probably be able to play. The Panthers had some other good news this week. George Morrison was named Coach of the Year, and star center Curtis Robinson was named Most Valuable Player. I'm really glad about the award, but uh, one thing really that's on my mind is this weekend. I'll think more about it probably after. Two weekends from now is over after we finish the CAUs, but... <laughs> But first, the Panthers have to beat St. Mary's tonight. Then they'd play Acadia, who finished second in the conference and are ranked nationally. But UPEI has defeated both Acadia and number one seed Dalhousie this season. So George Morrison thinks this weekend, anything can happen. In the 12 years previous to this, only twice has the team that won the league won the playoff weekend, won the tournament. Ruts and dents and scrapes and fender benders is our business. Come on down to DL Auto Body. Whether your car is heavily damaged or if you're looking for a top quality paint job, bring your vehicle into DL's Auto Body. You can be assured of top quality workmanship from start to finish. Everyone at DL's remind you to thank DL's, DL's Auto Body. At Sherwood Drug Mart, we're proud to be Charlottetown's oldest family-run drugstore. For over 40 years, families have been trusting their health and medication needs with our family. Our pharmacists are always there to help you choose the right remedy for your bad cough. And medication needs with our family. Our pharmacists are always there to help you choose the right remedy of that new medication the doctor prescribed for you. And if you can't pick up your prescription, we'll gladly deliver to your door, free of charge. We even offer our customers free clinics to get their cholesterol and blood sugar checked. We're Charlottetown's oldest family-run drugstore, Sherwood Drug Mart. Fort Atlantic Maintenance Supply. This is where we're at. And this is what we do. We sell fasteners. And pressure washers, too. Cutting tools and abrasives. Milwaukee Power Tools. And snowmobile traction and performance products. We have the largest selection of fasteners on PEI, including bolts, nuts, washers, screws, and construction fasteners. For Atlantic Maintenance Supply, visit us in Charlottetown. Or call us. And we'll come to your door. Sunny and cold on Sunday and warming up as we head into next week. Thanks, Kevin. And coming up Monday on Compass, we follow island entrepreneur Lars Davidson. He's trying to sell his board game box office. And don't forget the East Coast Music Awards tonight on CBC. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Next week on Main Street, we'll check in at a rehearsal at the Benevolent Irish Society for a new musical play for St. Patrick's Day. This one was written by Michael Pendergast. Also, we'll meet...